Hello everyone, this is Miss Milk with Vibe Barber College. Today we're going to be going over chapter 16 in the gray or the platinum looking book. It's uh, titled Women's Haircutting and Styling. Uh, there are about nine learning objectives to this chapter, so you want to make sure that you go over each one of them um, in its entirety. So a lot of times, you know, in barbering, they say, well, I'm in barber college. Why is this um, chapter in the book? Well, the thing is, is that with women's haircutting, a lot of times women will go to a local uh, barber shop whether they've been in there before or not or rather it was word of mouth maybe it's their significant other that patronizes that shop and they'll go in and they'll say can you trim my hair or they'll come in they'll say can you bevel me out in the back or bob my hair or just lower the sides and leave the top so a lot of times they, women are more entrusting to the barbers doing it more so than, um, than who would normally style their hair. So don't be surprised when you see women just randomly walking in and asking for a haircut service uh, from you. And this chapter will help you to prepare for it, uh, the readiness as far as the industry is concerned and the evolving that it has with women's haircutting, okay? So, um, in general, the concept of a barbershop implies a male domain, but however, uh, many women seek haircutting services from a barber, as I just uh, said. So one should never assume that a barbershop is just for men. There are women today that walk into a barbershop and request a service. So just be on the lookout for them and target them. When you are out and about, um, throughout your normal day, make sure that you are targeting, you are speaking to, you are um, giving your information to women as well as men, all right? Let's see, so women's hair cutting and styling. Uh, the Some of the reasons that barbers should have a thorough understanding of women's hair cutting would be, is that them being able to provide hair care services to women and it will uh, enable them, it, it will enable a barber to be able to expand their client base. And when you expand your client base, you actually, um, you increase your income, your financial income. So that's a good thing. And then also the knowledge and skill in women's haircutting will help to apply your men's haircutting skills in different ways. Barbers also need to know how to perform basic hairstyling techniques after completing a woman's haircut in order to meet um, the woman's hairstyling uh, expectations. All right, let's move forward. Uh, we're on 531 now. Let's see, in discussing men versus women's haircut. So one obvious thing in men versus women haircut is the hairline area, okay? So for men, it's gonna be a box, okay? For women, it's going to be more natural, more rounded out and more natural. So now here's the thing. In today's society, the best thing that I'll recommend that my students do and any other student barbers is that if you have a woman that you do not know personally that comes into the shop and she goes, hey, um, I wanna get my hair cut. When you sit her down for the consultation and you're going through how she wants it cut, be sure to say, when we get to your design line or your line, do you want that line to be feminine or do you want that line to be masculine? Because that will give you more detail as far as the finish work of the haircut to bring it all together for their liking, okay? 
Um, so there are some basic differences between cutting women's hair and men's hair. So short, tapered men cuts usually appear more angular in their overall form when women's shortcuts often appear to be more rounded, meaning this, more rounded, okay? Um, in women's hair cutting, curved design lines, feathering, or texturizing at the perimeter is often used to soften the look. So even if they come in and they're just getting it lowered, maybe just tapered down, you could French around the perimeter of that haircut and it will soften the overall look of it okay um let's see the next one women cuts tend to require more styling than men's cuts to achieve the final look sometimes sometimes they'll come in and they'll request to get their hair cut a certain way but don't panic because a lot of times like when i was wearing my hair low i would go to the barbershop for them to cut it but I would in return go home and style it myself or I would simply tell the barber, hey, just wet it down, you know? So just because it's a woman, a woman coming in and it's, she's requesting this particular haircut, it does not mean that it's gonna be something extremely difficult to do as far as the wrapping up the styling of it, okay? It could be simple things like mousse. Maybe she wants you to wrap it in a circle with some mousse and put under the dryer or, you know, whatever it may be, the hair is already low. So it's going to be something simple. And pictures, um, pictures help to ensure that what you're envisioning and what they, the client is thinking is the same or you all are somewhat on some type of the same page or in the same area. Okay, um, a few haircut reminders. You're going to start with clean, uh, conditioned hair. A lot of times you can train your clients uh, to either shampoo their hair prior to coming. Prior could mean before coming in or prior could also mean the day before um, or the night before. Another thing is that they'll also know that if they themselves have not shampooed their hair, then you will definitely be giving them a shampoo once they arrive to the barbershop, okay? Um, let's see. Another thing is that with hair cutting reminders, you want to pay attention to the client's head positioning through the haircut. So if the client's head, if the client is sitting in a chair and their hair position is like this, that is going to make the hairline be completely like that at a seesaw, okay? So it's nothing to just straighten the client's head up. It's not anything that is offensive to them. Um, in your wording, you could say, hey, do me a favor and sit up straight for me. You know, there are different gestures that you can even uh, make with it to insinuate that you need for them to sit up with kids. I like to say, hey, chin up chin up you know and it allows them is you know to know to i have to straighten up you can't be slouched down in a chair while you're getting a haircut or the overall cut will end up looking that way from the front view and also the size the fading will be off because the client was not positioned correctly in the chair okay uh Another thing with hair cutting reminders is that you want to pay attention to your finger placement, okay? So we know thumbs on top with clippers. We know when we are handling our shears, proper placement, our razor, proper placement. Always be mindful of your fingers. Don't forget about your fingers. Be very, um, be very, very mindful of your finger placement. You also want to take consistent, clean partings to produce precise results. So a lot of times when they're saying clean or concise partings, if you utilize your rat tail comb, um, it will help you to be able to do concise or clean partings on the client's head. 
you also want to um when you are doing a lot of women's cuts you want to keep the hair in a damp nature so not like freezing cold water on that client but a room temperature water bottle um out for that client and not a saturated where it's just like dripping wet but just a moist where it is uh somewhat wet or in a dampened state okay and another thing you want to work with the natural growth pattern of the hair not against them so if the natural growth pattern is this that's how that clipper is going to go if the natural growth pattern is like this you're not going to take the clipper and go like that because that's not cutting with the natural growth pattern of the hair and in barbering we do this and i am very uh particular about doing this because you know that's just like when you have a uh, client in your chair and they have those waves those 360 waves okay so maybe those waves are not just coming boom 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 maybe those waves are coming whoop 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 you have to be able to maneuver that clipper in the direction that the natural hair grows because you can gash that wave and if once you cut into that wave there's no returning from that you can go a level lower but that means that you'll have to take the entire haircut a level lower meaning still that those different world or growth patterns are going to definitely show in that cut especially from a distance or when you are using your mirror uh to mimic your work all right another thing is that you always want to work with a guide or a guideline if you cannot see the guide do not uh cut the hair you want to cross check to find where you last left off in that haircut and when we're talking about guides and guidelines we are actually the textbook is actually talking about traveling guides stationary guides uh things of that sort the um, let's see another thing is that you want to plan for shrinkage factors so a lot of times when you are cutting hair and when you dampen that hair a lot of times that hair will shrink up you have to be mindful of that so if a client says hey i just really want you to take an inch or inch and a half off the top and we know that each notch on our finger represents an inch you have to take into accountability of the shrinkage so it's still going to be shorter than that inch or the half an inch and please be sure to express that to your client during the consultation not after the cut mm -mm, it's too late they are not going to uh, be open or understanding at that point. That is something that you want to definitely voice, repeatedly voice at least three times uh, before you begin the haircut, especially dealing with women's haircuts. Okay, let's see. And the last one, you want to always check and cross check your work. Um evidently you want to you can cross check your work by bringing it up with your fingers with your traveling guide you cross check your work with the mirror even um you cross check your work with the comb it's different ways different methods of doing that but just be sure to do it especially when dealing with women haircuts okay then you have um, these different degrees. You got 180, 90, 45, you got zero degree elevation. Please utilize your degrees and your elevations, particularly with women's cuts, because that is the way that the hair will fall after the cut. Okay, so if it's a blunt cut, you know that a blunt cut is also known as a one length cut because all the hair strands end at one level to form a heavy weight line at the perimeter. Okay, uh, another thing, blunt cuts look like all the hair is the same length, but the hair is actually all falling to one point of varying lengths, varying lengths. That's a, a blunt cut. Uh, that's over on 532. You want to make sure that you look at those figures. Um, then they have a few more hair cutting tips for blunt cuts. 
Then you have the graduated cut. So the graduated cut will have a wedge or a stack shape that is created by cutting with tension as low with a low to medium elevation. So that's that stack cut from the back and it's graduating up, okay? Um, another thing, graduated cuts build weight and volume along the perimeter of the hairstyle. So a lot of times when you see that shaggy looking bob with all that volume at the top, that is normally considered to be a graduated cut. And also graduated, graduated cuts also um, the, can be accomplished with either horizontal or vertical parting. So the partings are not in particular when you are doing a graduated cut, excuse me. Um, then the textbook goes over to uniform layer cut at a 90 degree. Um, that would mean that all of the hair strands are cut to the same length at a 90 degree elevation. Then we got long layer haircuts, which is all the way up. <laughs> That's 180 degrees. So long layer consists of increased layering that is achieved by cutting the hair at 180 degree elevation. Uh, this cut also produces progressively longer layers from the top to the perimeter. The hair on top of the head is, of course, shorter than the hair closer to the perimeter or the exterior guide, okay? And sometimes long glare haircuts begin with a stationary guide um, in the top section of the head. That's just a little FYI. Um, then the textbook goes on to 535 and table 16.1 is talking about texture and density. So each person has different hair texture. It's not in conjunction with the person's race um, necessarily. Um, you have to just actually feel and analyze the hair for yourself to know if the texture is fine, if the texture is medium, if the texture is coarse. In barbering, we do not refer to someone and we do not refer to that client and we say, yeah, that's Tom. You know Tom with that real nappy hair and he be getting that low ball fade with that nappy hair. We do not say that. We say this in return. You know Tom. Tom has that very coarse hair and Tom gets that low ball fade with that very, and he has very coarse hair in return. That is the way that we would describe a client's hair, okay? So it's fine, medium, and uh, coarse. And then you have a little chart, and um, that's table 16.1. In curly hair texture, so curly hair types range from large, loose curl patterns to it could be a very tight curl pattern or a springy curl. So any of these four cutting elevations can be used on curly hair. However, the results will be different from those achieved on straighter hair, okay? And then it has a couple of examples for you. And then it goes into techniques for cutting naturally curly hairstyles. And like I pointed out to you all before, please at the consultation, tell that client about the shrinkage, okay? Um, then you have um, to explore various cutting techniques. So we have over direction, uh, razor cutting and texturizing. So in an over direction, it will occur when the hair is combed away from its natural fall position. So if the hair naturally falls here and you come in with the comb and you're combing, that's a over direction. You're just combing away from its natural fall position. Now, here's the thing. You can also cut clipper cut in an over direction. Yes, beautiful blending. You can also razor cut in an over direction and you can also shear cut in an over direction. It's not just combing, okay? So please make sure that you know that. Uh, blending short or long lifts along a perimeter design line or an interior section 
is what you're doing with the over direction keyword there is blending blending and in barbering if we're not blending then what are we doing so we have to make sure that we are utilizing these words in within this chapter within our textbook so that we are ensuring the comfortability of our clients so that they can be pleased at the end of their service and they can repeat and they can send referrals. That's the goal. Okay, so with razor cutting, so razor cutting uh, produces an angle at the ends of the hair that result in softer shapes with more movement and visual separations than shear cutting. So generally, haircuts that can be accomplished with shears can also be performed with a razor. Okay, if you can do it with the shear, you best believe you can do that cut with a razor. Absolutely, you can do it. Okay, razors have guards, razors have comb attachments, razors are used in so many different varieties that we are not in the days of the old barbering. We have evolved as far as a lot of things, but really concerning our razor as well. Okay. Then the textbook has a lot of different texturizing um, information in it as far as point cutting, which is one of my favorite, um, notching and slithering, okay? So you want to make sure that you are looking at that. And then um, within hairstyling, where you got wet hairstyling, you got hair wrapping, and the textbook talks about it in detail and it also has uh, visual aids as far as pictures uh, within the textbook. It also talks about hair molding. It's just um, combing the hair straight down over the client's head. You're going to dry it and finish with thermal irons and then it talks about blow drying and styling. Um, with thermal styling, we know that thermal means heat so that's in conjunction with some type of a curler, curling iron. Then you have thermal waving, and then it shows you the different uh, rod placements like on base, half off base, off base. Um, you do not need to just know this for this chapter. These are things that you also need to know for your practical examination concerning thermal for State Board of Tennessee. So please make sure that you are looking at the angles of those rods. Um, and as we go through the chapter is also talking about flat irons making um curly hair or wavy hair straight with the use of thermal which is heat as i just said then you have some pictures of a blunt cut and how to start them off um step by step graduated cut lots of pictures lots of visual examine um examples then you have um the textbook goes into a uniform layer cut with great examples. And then you have the long layer uh, cut, right? That was the 180 degree. Then it shows you about the hair wrapping, which we just talked about. And then on procedure 16.6, it's about blow drying blunt or long layer straight to wavy hair into a straight style. Just using your blow dryer, using uh, different brushes, round brush, barrel brushes. Uh, those brushes work in conjunction with women's hairstyling. Then the textbook goes into hair pressing, uh, flat iron pressing, okay? You only have about six review questions uh, for this chapter 16, women's hair cutting and styling, and just a handful of glossary um, terms. So please be sure to look over this chapter in its entirety. It's fun. It's things that you can practice on your mannequins. You never know when you're going to have to utilize your skills. And if you learned it, then why not? This is Miss Nook with Vibe Barber College. This was chapter 16, women's hair cutting and styling. Have a great day.